actually came. What was the genesis for Repo? Yeah, you, you start with the hardest question, right? Like, where does creativity come from? Okay, favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, would some, I get asked this question a lot, and, and there's, um, at Repo, uh, since it started as a stage play, it, it traversed many years, and it grew, and different ideas came in along the way, but if I'm really honest with myself, I think the answer to the question is very simple. It's a love of rock and roll, a love of the macabre, and a love of hot chicks. You put them all in a stew and you stir them around and you get Repo. <laughs> now, when you first envisioned it, it was, a, it was a stage play, right? How long was it a stage play before it got to the point where it was, tell us about how you met Darren and how the movie actually came to fruition. Um, well, the whole journey was about eight and a half years. So it started out actually as a, a two-man, almost like a cabaret act that Darren Smith, uh, Repo's co-creator, and I did at Rock Clubs. And we did that for about a year before actually becoming, I guess, officially a stage play, bringing in more actors, expanding the world, expanding the story, expanding the music musicians. Um, and when we did it for the very first time as an official stage show, where we had a theater under at our control, we had choreography, um, we also had a director for the first time, and that director ended up being Darren Bowsman. Um, and this is before he had directed Saw or anything else. So he came in, he was pretty much fresh off the bus from Kansas. And he said, uh, he told us, you know, basically what we wanted to hear, which was, I love horror movies, and I love rock operas. And I came to Hollywood to try to make a rock opera film. And, you know, on the one hand, when you're, when you're interviewing people for a job, they'll tell you what you want to hear, even if it's not true. You know, like, you're the best I've ever had. <laughs> uh, but in Darren's case, you could tell he really believed it. He, yeah, we believed it. He was just like, he meant it. We went to his house, we saw that he had things like Tommy and Jesus Christ Superstar on rotation. And, uh, and so it really was, I think, a match made in hell. And then it continued on as a stage play, and, and Bowsman said, you know, if I'm ever in a position where I can turn Repo into a movie, I will. And eight and a half years later, it happened. Thank God for that, huh? <laughs> it was a long road bringing that puppy to the screen now. Ogre okay, and Bill, do you want to talk now or you want to finish eating grapes? <laughs> Should I continue with Terrence for a little bit? Sure, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. There's a moderator. Can you pass the grapes down here? <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys get involved with the project? Uh, well, uh, I. Uh, well, first of all, how many Cornbox fans are there here? Cornbox! <laughs> and the people who aren't shouting and raising their hands, you guys are missing out. And check out be. Spider Mountain, too. His name yeah. is Spider Mountain, is really good. Bill's actually a talented musician. Yeah. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Well, it's funny, actually, you, you mentioned cornbugs because uh, when I was being snipped around for uh, a part in, in Repo, uh, Darren Bowsman asked me uh, if I could sing. And, um, and I had already given him some cornbugs CDs. And I said, well, yeah, cornbugs. And he goes, yeah, well, can you sing? <laughs> Sing. And they and because uh, I they uh, I was asked to audition uh, for the parts uh, for a part of the movie and um, and I did I came to the studio and uh, followed one of the Pussycat Dolls and I sang I think I sang maybe Night Surgeon Legal Assassin Legal Assassin so um, can you give us a sample. <laughs> 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 no, I can't. <laughs> but uh, I did a good enough job, actually, because uh, uh, we were at a studio that was uh, Yashiki's studio in North Hollywood, and Yashiki is a, it's like the prince, like the you know guy prince, uh, you know purple one uh, of Japan, and Yashiki had this fabulous studio, and he had what I call the magic microphone. Because I was really worried about, oh my God, how am I going to sound? You know, because sometimes we sound better in the shower, and then we actually stand up in front of people, and we sound kind of not as good. But this microphone was so magical 
Because as soon as I went, uh, it just sounded deep and rich, buttery. That full. sounded pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, and so that encouraged me to, you know, give it my all. I got the job. So that's the end of my story. Thank you very much. I'm still stuck on you making that noise and saying buttery afterwards. <laughs> it's kind of hot. <laughs> I'm sorry, everything goes to hell that I do. Pussycat doll did not get the job. No, she did not. Ha ha ha! I missed my pace! Um, I, I, I had a bit of serendipity in the sense that uh, um, I just finished a tour and I met Joe Bashara, who was doing, uh, who did work on the music with Terrence Smith. And Darren Smith and was instrumental in, uh, I guess very instrumental in the end when, when Yoshiki was no longer a part of the project per se, he was very instrumental in putting together all of the music. And uh, we've been friends for a while. He had a band called Drown back in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I saw him after a show and he asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, well, I'd, you know, I'd love to be a monster in a movie, which has always been one of my things. And he said, out of, uh, he's working on a movie called Repo the Genetic Opera. There's one character that they're looking for and his name was Pavi and he was a face-stealing rapist, of course. <laughs> yes, who wouldn't gravitate towards that? So I was like, I was thrilled, and uh, my, my experiences of singing were a bit uh, a diff different than Bill's. In my audition, um, I met Darren and Terrence, and they were very gracious, and uh, I've never done uh, an audition, it sounds odd, as, as a singer, but I'd never gone in and done an actual audition. Um, I, I learned to sing in, in one of the most perverse ways uh, by basically gargling glass and uh, doing everything wrong with my voice. So to go in, I, I sat down at the piano with them, I remember, in the studio, and uh, they're like, uh, what can you audition for us? So I'm like, and they're like, well, do you know any standards? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so I, I, well, I didn't do very well at that part of the audition and uh, went back and did a, a reading and, and, and came back and did a reading as Pavi. And that's what kind of sealed it for me. And I think uh, originally Darren was looking for uh, uh, actors that could sing and wasn't really looking for singers that could act per se. So um, I had a little bit of an uphill battle just, just in, in, uh, in, in, in convincing people that I guess that I could act and sing at the same time. So I, I happened to do it quite by chance and was very lucky. And Terrence was obviously very supportive of, of, of getting into the role because they had to, again, push the producers um, and the... Uh, um, the actual company Lionsgate uh, for me as a character, coming from no real real acting background. Everybody else has quite a resume, and so um, it was a bit of it was, it was a bit of a push because they were also looking for a different type of Pavi. Uh, Pavi uh, was going from kind of a more uh, you know heavier set gentleman, and uh, they were looking at people like Newman from from uh, from Friends or from Seinfeld, I should say originally. <laughs> so it was, it was yeah. Jason yeah. Alexander, not just. Uh, it's the other that was Newman. I think his name. Yeah, it was I the other guy. I, I, I didn't watch his show. And, and so, was, yeah. And, and so it was, it was a bit of a, a stretch for me. So I came in and did my reading. I had a really good reading, and, and it was very I was supported by everybody. Everybody laughed. I, I basically came in with a mirror with Paris Hilton's face on it. And uh, I, I didn't know Paris was coming in that very date. I heard she was coming in for an audition, but I didn't know when. And so I had uh, my, my whole shtick was. Um, at the end of my audition, I'd be to the director or whoever, I'd say, You want to know who Pavi is? You want to know who fucking Pavi is? I'll show you who Pavi is. And I showed the mirror with Paris' face. And um, before, I was sitting out practicing my lines nervously, and I heard this triumphant fanfare coming out of the studio, and the doors open, and Paris walks by me, and I have the mirror by my side, turned upwards, <laughs> and turned up downwards, and, uh, and she walks out to a fanfare of paparazzi, and I'm just like, Oh, God, what do I do now? And I went in and did it anyway, and it went off really good. So that's that's basically how I, I got the role. And there was a lot of um, of them caressing the uh, uh, film people to like get me in. So. Now, what one of the really hand cool jobs? Hand, hand jobs. jobs. Are, are, hand are, jobs. Are, are we bringing that back to the other night? To help the whole hand job motif? Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> We're we're bringing back buttery and hand jobs. So <laughs> what do you guys have Sam at home? Sweet. But, uh, I always make Bill think of hand jobs. I don't know how that happened exactly, but whatever. I'll go with it. I'm a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a <sour>. well, <laughs> <laughs>